When it comes to a nine to five, I'm the type, I ain't gonna hold you, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I ain't comfortable, if I don't feel, if it don't sit right with me, if I go to work and I feel some kind of anxiety and it's weighing heavy on me, and I feel like there's some kind of burden building up on my on my shoulders, I'm, I'm the type, I'll quit. I ain't gonna lie. I'll walk off that bit. You know what I'm saying? I'll quit. And I won't even hesitate, man. Now, I, I ain't gonna be that immature and quit right away. I'll, you know, I'll try to thug it out. I try to work it out in my head and be like, all right, man, find a way to like this, this and that. And I've done that with plenty of jobs I've been on. I've stayed on even though it was a lot of BS going on or I just felt like, man, I felt so uncomfortable. I felt, I felt out of place. I thugged it out. I played mental mind games with myself and I put my emotions in check. Like, all right, man, you got to be mature. You can't be doing childish behavior like, you know, just walking off something the first time it don't go your way. And I've put up with, with nonsense before in uncomfortable situations, but I'm not going to lie. There's been times I don't walk off a job, bro. Um, you know. But see, I quit a job recently, but I got another job through the staffing agency. Like, I ain't going to lie. The staffing agency, this particular one, there's moments when there's nothing going on, and I go through little droughts of unemployment. But there's times, I ain't going to lie, they be having stuff ready. It's just the job they give me, it might be some distance. I might have to drive more than 30 minutes to get to it. You know what I'm saying? Like the job I got now, I got to drive like 40 something minutes just to get to it. So, but yeah, so when it comes to a nine to five in the workplace or whatever, a job, if I don't feel comfortable with it, I'll walk off. I don't quit jobs in the past, especially like when I was younger, like 19, 20, 21. I'm not going to lie. Because even back then, I just felt like, okay, um, I guess immaturity played a part into it And in the fact I didn't have too many uh, Responsibilities or priorities But I'll just be like I'll walk off I'll quit If I don't like how somebody talking to me This and that I mean I quit a job a few months ago I ain't gonna lie But it was already, the assignment was already almost over I was working at this, this government Facility Where they build certain things I can't really speak on You know but um it was me and a group of other guys. And you can go you can go down my timeline of videos. It was a whole little journey back then. I used to come on and do videos about certain situations that happened. The, 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 the nonsense I had to put up with. With the, you know, the crack, the, the functioning crackhead, fiending ass boss. You know. And, um, he was alright. Only if he, like, popped his pills and took his little drugs in the morning. But if he ain't had his hit yet, man, he was on some bullshit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he'll be on some nonsense, bruh. You come in over a hangover, tripping and stuff, man. And, you know, he'll leave the work site for hours and just leave us to our own devices. We'll just BS around a little bit. We work a little bit. See, you know, it's a little gig assignment. So, you know, we didn't really take it that serious. But they was paying $20 an hour. And um, at first, I was excited about it, man. At the time, I was like, yeah, man, I'm about to work this job. It's $20 an hour. I'm thinking we gonna see like a thousand, at least a thousand dollar checks, but we ain't really see that because you could be working twenty dollars an hour, but if you only working like thirty hours a week, if you ain't getting your full forty hours or whatever it is, then it's ba you basically still working like fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour, fourteen dollars an hour. So it really ain't no big deal. That's how some jobs get you. They might say your starting pay is such and such dollars an hour, but if you ain't getting that full time in, or if you ain't getting no overtime at all, then it's like your paycheck ain't gonna look that pleasant. You ain't gonna really get no dopamine rush when you open up your paycheck. I'm not gonna lie. When that when that money hits your account, you're gonna be like, eh, I guess. I mean, it's better than nothing. You know, so you're gonna find yourself still going back to work because you need the money, but you're not really satisfied with the pay at the end of the week. So that's what I went, that's what I went through on that job. It was like it was laid back and chill, but you know, you had to deal with the, the 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 crackhead boss and stuff like that or whatever but he was he was cool you know he had his times so he could be cool and stuff and he'll look out for you you know but anyways i just brought that up to say you know what i'm saying um it was only a two-month gig but it, it was supposed to end on a friday i walked off on a wednesday man i just i ain't gonna lie i probably had a mental breakdown and um i had a person trying to use me for a car ride you know um, Cause I took them a couple times, like on a lunch break, you know, we go to eat something. I'm like, all right, I ain't gonna exclude the nigga. Like he was cool or whatever. 
I like to have my own personal time and time to myself. But I'm like, all right, if I'm going to grab something to eat, if he ain't got no car, I ain't going to, like, do him like that. I ain't, you know, I got a heart to a degree. I'm going to go ahead and look out. You know, he can grab something from Burger King, McDonald's, or Wendy's, or wherever we going. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? But it got to the point, he just wanted to sit in my car. It wasn't just about going to eat something. He just want to sit in my car, just sit in my car. I'm like, man, I had to tell him, I had to tell him a couple times, like, nah, man, you know. I said, I ain't going nowhere to eat. I'm just going to sit in my car. I ain't really leaving the job premises, you know. And I might just want to just chill on my phone and, you know, watch some videos or something, man. You know what I'm saying? Just chill, relax, have time to myself, take a mental break. So it was that. Um, He was acting funny on the last day, calling my phone while I'm on break. Because I kind of went to break early that day. And um, he was calling my phone and saying, oh, we got to come back. We got to move something out the truck, some shit, you know turns out we didn't really have to do it and i think he was just trying to like see where i was at just weird shit. like like dude you acting too clingy he was acting weird man and then some dude other job some other guy on the job older white guy always brag about his corvettes which is you know it's whatever man but <clears throat> he got he started getting a little snappy at the job because um stuff was kind of coming down on him he was like an engineer or something like that so he was in charge of doing putting the wires in and stuff like that and every now and then i go help him and stuff like that if i was told to go help him and i had to sit there and listen to him blabber and talk and run his mouth by his little his uh corvettes and stuff and and not to act interested and stuff like that he just talked too much but on the last day he was getting a little disrespectful like the way he would talk to me oh don't touch my tools and he was very particular about not touching his tools and stuff you could just walk by his toolbox you ain't even thinking about the little dusty ass toolbox, but he told me some more. Hey, hey, don't touch my tools. And he, he was one of them people. Like, I don't know if somebody like ran off on the plug, ran off with his tools before, but he was very paranoid. And then, then I get to thinking like, is it a race thing? It, cause I'm, cause I'm, cause I'm black. You think I'm trying to touch your stuff? But he was like that with everybody. He even told a white guy that one time. I seen him like, hey, you know, hey, be careful though. Make sure you put that back. Don't touch my tools. You know what I'm saying? So he just, he was just like, it wasn't even a race thing. He just, he would just, he was just like that. He was very paranoid about his tools. Like, nobody touching your tools, man. You know? But, um... So, he was acting funny the last day. And... It was just a lot of... It was just a lot of... Dealing, I was dealing with mentally, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. I just wasn't in the mood. I'm like, man, it was a Wednesday, so... We, the assignment was gonna end on a Friday. Two days from that day. I'm just like, man, I, ain't, I, just, I just walked off, bro. I ain't tell nobody. I walked off. On my way out, I passed the crackhead boss and the top dude, the main guy, the short old old man who owns a lot of guns and stuff. And um, they asked me where I was going because I had just got done helping out the, the engineer dude, the old dude, that was crazy about his tools and shit. So I just made it, I made it up in my mind at that point I was going to leave. So I walked down the steps, this flight of stairs, the head out of the building, and on my way down the stairs, the crackhead boss and the other guy came walking up. Like, hey man, where you going? And I'm like, well, uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I was just like, I wasn't gonna tell them I was about to walk off. I was trying to be like, just subliminal or sneaky with it. So I just, I just said, I'm going to the bathroom real quick. So, you know, we brushed shoulders, walked past each other, and then I walked off that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Then turn my, I didn't turn my head, and then look back, I walked off. And then I seen the dude, his, his number was calling my phone and stuff. But anyway, I just tell that story to say, man, I'm the type, bro. I'm, once I'm fed up, I'll leave, man. I'll leave a situation. And it's not just a job, it's anything. If I'm visiting a family and I feel some kind of way, I'll just get up and leave, man. I'll just play it all. Like, all right, man, you know, I'm ready to go. I might just start to feel some way with myself, you know. And just start to feel uncomfortable. And I'll, I'll just get up and go. I feel like, if I just feel uncomfortable, if I feel unwanted, I'm not seeking nobody validation. I'm not fiending or um, desperate for your attention or your approval. I'm, I've never really been like that. As a kid, I can always just go entertain myself. I can go play by myself. i I just always been that kind of person. I don't, I don't need your entertainment or nothing like that. So I can get up and bounce. I ain't trying to be your friend. I ain't trying to be your buddy and your pal. Um, like on jobs, you know, guys 
they sit around in these groups and they talk and they chop it up but it's cool you know what i'm saying every now and then i might you know put in my little input little two cents or whatever or whatever but i make it real short and simple and then i bounce like if somebody talk to me i ain't gonna be weird and just give them the cold shoulder and walk off and act like they're not there you know i'll, I'll converse back you can have a little small conversation and boom I make my little getaway after that. I ain't trying to stand around and talk too much. And I, I don't want to get to the point where, you know, I'm expected to kiss ass and all that. And I never get comfortable with bosses and supervisors, man. I've had a couple in the past that was all right. It was cool, you know. You know, they could joke around a bit and I'd be okay okay with it. But I got to pick up on their vibe. If they seem like, okay, they cool. They ain't going to be in no weird type of stuff. All right, you know what I'm saying? I can tolerate it a little bit. But for the most part... I ain't trying to be buddy buddy, especially with no head management and supervisors and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, yeah, I just try to avoid group talks at work. Um, it's just best, like I said in my one video, it's best to limit your interaction with coworkers as much as possible, and especially watch what you say, watch what come out your mouth. But um, yeah, for the most part, it's been times in the past, yeah, I, I walk off a job, man. I'll put up with it for so long And then I'll just walk off Or I'll just do what they call quiet quitting It's basically where you stay going to the job But you don't really give it your all You don't go all out You do the bare minimum I'll do that I'll probably come up to a job Working real good I always have a reputation of being a good worker When I first get onto a job Bosses tend to like They like me They cater to me at first You know I'm quiet for the most part I keep to myself you know, people respect that. But after a while, man, I'll just kind of, like, fall back off of that, man. I ain't breaking my back and going all out forever. I can't. Because it's like, I know what to expect. I'm in routine mode. I'm in robot mode. It just get boring after a while. It's like, I can't come in with the same energy every day. At some point, I'm just going to kind of fall back. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to fall back a little bit. But I'm going to do what I got to do. But I'm kind of doing the bare minimum at this point. And if I ain't careful... If I don't keep myself in check, I'll get to the point where I just don't give a fuck at all. I'm talking about I ain't just doing the bare minimum. I'm barely just doing shit. <laughs> like I ain't gonna lie. I've mean, I've had that mistake before. I just ain't doing nothing at all. I'm just like, man. You can see in my body demeanor, my my body behavior. I'm walking around, shoulders kind of slump. I'm just not even caring. I'm not even caring to laugh at your little jokes no more. I'll get to that point. At first, I'll be nice and try to hee hee haw a little bit but i get to the point i ain't even laughing at your little jokes no more i'm just like straight face <laughs> you know what i'm saying i ain't even finding nothing funny no more i don't even care to pretend that i care about what you're talking about i just man you know that's why it's best to keep your personal problems outside of work sometimes that stuff can carry inside of work with you and it could affect how you treat people and this and that. But who cares, man? You don't owe nobody nothing. You dare to get you dare to do the job, get it done. But at the same time, try to do the bare minimum, man. You know? Now if you self-employed and stuff like that, I ain't gonna lie, you gotta give it your all. You gotta it's your brand, that's your marketing, that's that's you. That's your image, that's your reputation. But on these jobs, man, if you working for somebody, do what you gotta do to make sure you get that paycheck. But don't don't break your back. For somebody forever, man. Don't don't be a fucking don't be a slave, man. Don't let them because people will take advantage of that. People will capitalize off of that. Like, all right, you seem like a good worker. Especially if you a pushover, don't stand up for yourself, and you work hard and break your back. Oh yeah, they definitely gonna use you. You gonna be their prize, man. You gonna be their prize, man. And um, I've seen people eager to want to do things at work, and you ain't even getting paid, man. This one dude that was one job I was at. He trying to operate machines and stuff. He was just volunteering. And the boss like, all right, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? He's still getting the same little pay, but he want to get on this machine. When the actual machine operator for that machine getting paid probably like over $25 an hour. Probably $30-something dollars an hour. And he want to hop on the machine just because he want to do something new and feel like he got, you know, he get an ego boost and impressing the boss. And, all right. He end up messing around and putting a hole into the wall with the machine wheel and you know, and now hey, that was that. He almost got fired behind that. That's just an example. Like they, they don't care. Hey, oh okay. You want to break your back for the company? All right, hey, they ain't got no problem with that. Who gonna turn that down? 
That don't mean you're going to get a pay raise. That don't mean you're going to get the red carpet rolled out for you and get promotion or whatever. You just might get a pat on the back. You might, you might get some pizza, some some jobs to get you some pizza or whatever. You know, if it's a job that's based off production, you might get a little bonus here and there. But man, I'll say, man, stick to doing the, the bare minimum at these workplaces, man. I ain't gonna lie. But I'm just saying, I'm the type, bro. If I'm if I'm uncomfortable, if I'm not liking the situation, I'll get up and go. I'll leave, bro. But see, I gotta put the context into, into it that I don't have any kids, so. You know, I could probably get away with going a couple weeks without a job. I got to put that in the context as well. Now, I do got stuff I got to take care of. But if I had kids, man, you can't be walking off no job. You got to put up with it. At least at least find something before you quit a job. You can't you can't uh risk just walking off a job like that. You just job hopping like a bunny rabbit and stuff like that. But anyways, I just thought I'd do a video real quick. I ain't gonna make this video too long. Let me know your thoughts on this subject, man. But yeah, man, I'm out.